on deck, we have Sean Cuthan. But coming to the stage, she's going to be on Yuck Yucks the next two weeks. So uh, get your tickets for that. But uh, here we go. Give it up for Jenny Ryan. Hi, everybody. Hope you don't mind. I brought my notes with me because I'm a middle-aged mother of two and I can't remember anything. So yeah, I, I'm a mom, but I also have fantasies. You know, I fantasize like everybody else. For instance, I have this fantasy that I like to visit sometimes in my head. That I'm just out walking down the street when all of a sudden, BAM! I'm hit by a car. And then I'm hospitalized for two to three days. You know, nothing serious, but I'm kept for observation so that I can get away from my kids. <sighs> Do you know that movie, Bad Moms? I've never seen it, but my boyfriend was watching it by himself. I'm not sure why he was alone. Maybe research. Anyway, <sighs> he came to me and he said, Jenny, you have to see this scene in the film. And he showed it to me, and in the movie, there's the scene where one of the bad moms turns to another bad mom and says that she has this fantasy about getting hit by a car, and she'd like to be hospitalized for two or three days to get away from her kids. <laughs> and you guys, I don't know what's more frightening to me. <laughs> that somebody in Hollywood is reading my mind. <laughs> or that so many women want to get hit by cars then get away from their kids, but now it's just part of popular culture. <sighs> so yeah. Doing great all the time. I get a little anxious. I get a little upset, and it's definitely trickling down to my children. My oldest son has started having nightmares, and he came to me the other day and he said, "Mommy, I had a bad dream." And I said, "What was it?" And he said, "I dreamed I was being eaten alive by a dinosaur." And I was like, "Man, I wish that were my worst fear." <laughs> you know, he also was anxious. He always wants to know what's coming next. What happens after swimming? What happens after school? What happens when you and daddy finally stop fighting? <laughs> and, and he recently said, asked me, he said, what happens when I grow up? What happens then? And I didn't know what to tell him because there are so many options for his future, you know? Like maybe he's gonna get married and have a beautiful home and meet wonderful children or maybe he's gonna get a super cool job and travel the world and have all kinds of adventures. Or maybe in 30 years, he's going to be fighting his former neighbor for the last feral cow in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. <laughs> no wonder we're anxious. It's a scary time. Even my baby feels it. My baby turns to me for comfort all the time. He's, like, obsessed with me. Well, specifically obsessed with this part of me. If you can't see in the back, I'm feeling myself up. <laughs> he's really into this. And I get it, it's where the food is, it's, you know, it's cozy in there, and I guess it makes sense why so many people grow up to be, like, into boobs, right? Like, you imprint as a baby. <laughs> but it does make you wonder when people are like, oh, no, I'm a leg man. You know, or like, well, you know, like Sir Mix-a-Lot, I like big butts. <laughs> like, what was going on in your home that you imprinted on that? <laughs> Good, I know. Anyway, I know I have to teach my baby how to self-soothe. You know, it's about time. But to be honest, he's a bit too young for his own cell phone, and I think TikTok would go right over his head, so. <laughs> but I'm looking after myself. You know, I do a lot of stuff for some self-care. I, I do comedy, that, that helps. For instance, I do this one show, it's monthly. It's a pretty exclusive audience, there's just one guy. And I pay him to be there, and he's a, th he's a counselor, and the show is called Therapy. That's why I tried all my new stuff. Yeah. He's, he's intense, though. He's tough. He's tough. Um, he tries to make me face things that I don't want to. I call him my scarapist. My scary therapist. You get it? Scarapist. Anyway. Greg, his name is Greg. Um, last month, though, he sometimes, he sometimes crosses the line. Like, I, I'm like, enough, Greg. Like, last month he said, Jenny, how long do you plan to be an adult child? What? How long do you plan to be an adult child? Well, I just put my fingers up my ears and stomped my little feet and said, no, 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 until he moved on. 
So yeah, I'm not doing great now, but I was doing a lot worse. <laughs> Let me tell you about this. Um, like, you know, two years ago, uh, when we were thick in the pandemic, um, I also had a baby. So I had some pretty severe and undiagnosed postpartum depression. And if you're not sure what that is, it's when you uh, hate your baby and you want to die. <laughs> so anyway, I found myself driving around one day, and I had, I had moved on from being hit by a car. No, now I'm looking for a bridge to jump off of. Okay, so I'm driving around, I'm looking for bridges, and I found one. And it was beautiful, tall, a train bridge. Um, it's where the pelicans come in the spring to, you know, nest. But, you know, very romantic, very iconic. Anyway, so I got out of my car, and I, I feel like I may have lost some of you here. I just need to, spoiler alert, I didn't do it. Okay, it's all right to laugh. Come on back on the ride. Let's go. It's okay. So I'm climbing up the stairs, um, just to kind of see how it feels. Climbing up the stairs of this bridge, and uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of stairs. And I'm like halfway up, I'm like, oh, jeez. I'm like, what if I have a heart attack and I just die right here? Because that would just be sad, you know? And I'm like, okay, what if I keep going and I make it to the top but I just pass out and tumble over the side? At least you made it. <laughs> At least I made it, but there's nothing iconic about that. You know? So then I'm like, well, do I go back down the stairs and just like work out for three to four months so that I can get in shape so that I can come back and run up the stairs and pull vault over the side? But that seems like a ton of work. Anyway, I decided to live. <laughs> to those of you who are clapping and cheering, thank you. And to those of us who are, those of you who are sitting silently, how did you hope that was going to end? <laughs> what did you want to happen? antidepressants now, so that's helped. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to wean myself off the Zoloft, because I don't know about you, I'm pretty sure we're headed to the end of the, end of the world, and I don't want to spend the apocalypse running around looking for antidepressants, you know? I want to spend my energy for the things that are important, like, you know, canned food and, and uh, ammunition and free Wi-Fi. So anyway, I, um, I'm trying to look after myself. I'm, I'm asking friends for advice. Uh, for instance, recently I was at this party, and I turned to this woman, she looked pretty fit, and I said, how do you do it? What's, what's your advice for me? And she said, well, I just always look for, you know, whoever the, the thinnest woman in the room is, and I do whatever she's doing. So that's how I ended up with a pretty hefty cocaine addiction. <laughs> but it's good, though, because it makes those workouts go extra fast. All right.